Friends, now let's discuss a very important nerve that is the radial nerve. Radial nerve is the largest nerve of the upper limb. It is a branch of the posterior chordobrachial plexus with a root value of C5 to T1. So all the roots of the brachial plexus that is C5, C6, C7, C8 and T1 contribute to the formation of radial nerve. Radial nerve supplies almost everything on the posterior aspect of upper limb. The posterior muscles of the arm, posterior muscles of the forearm, posterior cutaneous nerve of arm, posterior cutaneous nerve of forearm and skin over the posterior aspect of the hand and the skin over the posterior aspect of lateral three and a half digits. All posterior things are supplied by the radial nerve. I want you to associate this word posterior and this letter P with radial nerve. We'll be using it many times during the discussion of radial nerve. It comes from the posterior cord of brachial plexus, passes posterior to third part of axillary artery. It courses along the posterior wall of the axilla, runs in the lower triangular space along with the profunda brachii artery. It then enters the spiral groove or the radial groove present on the posterior aspect of humerus along with profunda brachii artery. The nerve lies closest to the bone where it pierces the lateral intermuscular septum. After piercing the lateral intermuscular septum, it runs between brachialis and brachioradialis muscle. It descends down anterior to the lateral epicondyle of humerus and divides into a superficial branch of radial nerve and a deep branch which after piercing the supineta muscle becomes the posterior introsseous nerve. So if you look at the course of the radial nerve, it is originating from the posterior chordobrachial plexus, passing posterior to third part of axillary artery. Courses along the posterior wall of the axilla, passes through the lower triangular space of the arm along with profunda brachii artery, passes through the spiral groove or radial groove on the posterior aspect of the humerus. It then descends down anterior to the lateral epicondyle of the humerus and divides into a sensory branch that is the superficial branch of radial nerve and a motor branch that is the posterior introsseous nerve or the deep branch of the radial nerve. Now talking about the branches coming out from the radial nerve, while the radial nerve passes through the axilla, it gives motor branches to the medial head and the long head of triceps. And we know triceps is involved in elbow extension. So the medial head and long head of triceps are supplied by the radial nerve when it is still passing through the axilla. Here it also gives rise to posterior cutaneous nerve of arm which supplies the skin over the posterior aspect of the arm. While passing through the spiral groove, it gives branches to lateral head of triceps and anconius. Here it also gives rise to inferior lateral cutaneous nerve of arm as well as posterior cutaneous nerve of forearm. The superior lateral cutaneous nerve of arm that is supplying the skin over the deltoid, the regimental batch area is actually a branch of axillary nerve. The inferior lateral cutaneous nerve of arm is coming from radial nerve. After piercing the lateral intermuscular septum, the radial nerve passes between brachialis and brachioradialis. It supplies the lateral aspect of brachialis muscle. This muscle brachialis has dual nerve supply. A lateral part supplied by radial nerve and a medial part which is supplied by musculocutaneous nerve. It also innervates brachioradialis and gives branches to extensor carpi radialis longus and extensor carpi radialis brevis. These muscles, especially the extensor carpi radialis longus, is helping in the extension of the wrist. 
and while traveling down anterior to lateral epicondyle of the humerus, the radial nerve divides into its terminal branches. It gives off a superficial branch of radial nerve which is purely sensory and a deep branch which becomes the posterior interosseous nerve and this is purely motor. The superficial branch of radial nerve enters the hand over the anatomical snuff box and supplies the skin on the posterior aspect of the hand and the posterior aspect of lateral three and half digits except the nail beds. The nail beds are supplied by the median nerve. So the superficial branch of radial nerve which is the terminal branch is purely sensory and it supplies the skin over the anatomical snuff box, the skin over the posterior aspect of the hand and the skin over the posterior or the dorsal aspects of the lateral three and a half digits. The deep branch of radial nerve penetrates the supinate arm muscle becomes the posterior interosseous nerve. The posterior interosseous nerve which is purely motor supplies the extensors on the back of the forearm like extensor digitorum, extensor carpi ulnaris, extensor digiti minimi, extensor pollicis longus, extensor pollicis brevis, extensor indices and abductor pollicis longus. So most of these extensor muscles on the posterior aspect of the forearm are actually supplied by the posterior interosseous nerve which in turn is a branch of radial nerve. So please remember the extensor digitorum which is helping in extension of the fingers or the extension of the digits is actually being supplied by posterior interosseous nerve. So finally I want you to remember that most of the triceps which is helping in elbow extension is mainly supplied when the radial nerve is still in the axilla. The muscles extensor carpi radialis longus and part of extensor carpi radialis brevis which are helping in extension of the wrist, they are supplied when the radial nerve is above the lateral epicondyle. And the extensor digitorum which is helping in extension of the fingers is supplied by the posterior interosseous nerve. Talking about some important applied anatomy aspects related to radial nerve, please remember it is the most commonly damaged nerve of the upper limb. So the most commonly damaged nerve of the upper limb is what? Radial nerve. And depending on the level of injury, the presentation can be different and is important to be able to localize the site of lesion. If there is a compression at the axilla, as it occurs in crutch paralysis, there is loss of extension of the elbow because of loss of action of triceps, loss of extension of the wrist because of loss of action of the extensor carpi radialis longus, extensor carpi radialis brevis and there is also loss of extension of digits because of loss of action of extensor digitorum. So along with loss of elbow extension, there is also wrist drop and finger drop when there is compression of the radial nerve at the axilla. The triceps is involved, so there is loss of elbow extension. The wrist extensors are lost, so there is wrist drop. There is weakness of supination. There is involvement of extensor digitorum leading to finger drop. And also there is sensory loss on the posterior aspect of the arm and the forearm due to loss of the posterior cutaneous nerve of arm and the posterior cutaneous nerve of forearm. And the involvement of the superficial branch of radial nerve leads to sensory loss on the dorsum of the hand and the dorsum of three and a half digits. So damage at the axilla leads to loss of elbow extension, wrist drop, finger drop, Sensory loss on posterior aspect of arm, sensory loss on posterior aspect of forearm and sensory loss on the posterior aspect or the dorsal aspect of the hand and the dorsal aspect of lateral three and a half digits. And damage to the radial nerve at the level of spiral groove or the radial groove leads to only partial weakness of elbow extension as most of the triceps is innervated when it was still in the axilla. So usually the elbow extension is spared when there is damage at the spiral groove. 
there is wrist drop because of involvement of the extensa carpi radialis longus, extensa carpi radialis brevis muscles. There is also loss of extension of fingers due to involvement of extensor digitorum muscle. There can be sensory loss on the dorsum of the hand and the dorsum of three and half digits due to involvement of the superficial branch of radial nerve. And damage to the radial nerve at the level of spiral groove or radial groove leads to only partial weakness of elbow extension. Do remember most of the triceps was innervated when the radial nerve was still in the axilla. Thus, damage to the radial nerve at the spiral groove. There is only partial weakness of elbow extension. Usually, the extension of elbow is paired. But, the wrist extensors are lost, so there is wrist drop. Extensor digitorum, which was involved in extension of digits, will be affected, so there is loss of extension of fingers. There is also involvement of the superficial branch of radial nerve leading to sensory loss on the dorsum of the hand and dorsum of three and a half digits. And damage to the radial nerve at the spiral groove can be seen in Saturday night palsy or honeymoon palsy. And Saturday night palsy is due to the compression or the pressure over the radial nerve at the mid arm level near the spiral groove, which occurs when a person falls into deep sleep with one's arm hanging over the armrest of a chair as in alcohol intoxication. So, because alcohol is usually consumed on a Saturday night and this palsy that develops because of this intoxicated person keeping his arm hanging over the armrest of a chair is called as Saturday night palsy. And why is it called honeymoon palsy? Is the radial nerve could be compressed due to the pressure of one's partner's head during sleep and thus it is also called as honeymoon palsy. And what would happen if there is a radial nerve injury at the level of the lateral epicondyle? When the radial nerve is damaged at the level of lateral epicondyle, there is no loss of extension of elbow because we know that the triceps is already innervated when it is in the axilla. So generally, the elbow extension is not affected, the triceps is spared. There is no wrist drop also as the extensa carpi radialis longus and the part of extensa carpi radialis brevis are spared which are responsible for wrist extension. And what would happen if there is damage to the radial nerve at the level of the lateral epicondyle? When the radial nerve is damaged at the level of lateral epicondyle, the triceps is spared so there is no loss of extension of the elbow. The extensa carpi radialis longus and a part of extensa carpi radialis brevis are also spared. So there is no wrist drop. You may have some weakness of wrist extension but not a complete wrist drop because the extensa carpi radialis longus and the part of extensa carpi radialis brevis are spared. Extensa digitorum is involved and thus there will be finger drop. And as the superficial branch of radial nerve is also involved, there is sensory loss over the dorsum of the hand and the dorsum of lateral three and a half digits. And what would happen if there is isolated injury to the posterior nerve? If only the posterior nerve is damaged, as can occur during radial head injuries or during surgeries in this area, there is no loss of extension of the elbow. As triceps is spared. There will not be wrist drop either because the extensa carpi radialis longus and the extensa carpi radialis brevis are spared and the damage to the postentrosseous nerve will lead to finger drop and this is due to loss of action of extensor digitorum. And as the superficial branch of radial nerve is not involved, there is no sensory loss on the dorsum of the hand or the dorsum of the lateral three and a half digits. Thus, isolated injuries to the postentrosseous nerve leads to finger drop mainly because of the loss of the action of the extensor digitorum. There are also loss of other extensors like the extensor indices, extensor policies, which are also supplied 
by the posterior interosseous nerve. So remember these important words in relation to radial nerve injury. Crutch paralysis, Saturday night palsy, fracture spiral groove and wrist drop, they occur due to radial nerve injury.